Do you want shadows as far as the eye can see where possible, and yet still be able to keep a consistent frame rate? Well, you just might be able to do that with a mod called Shadow Boost. Hi guys, and welcome to the very first Fallout 4 Mod Clinic, a series devoted to showing you mods that might require a little more explanation. And we're going to kick off the series with a mod called FPS Dynamic Shadows Shadow Boost by Alexander Blade. Now this is a mod that will attempt to adjust the distance which you can see shadows to try and match a certain required minimum FPS. Um, this is probably going to be easier if I actually show you. So I'm in game right now and I'm running shadow distance at ultra and I'm getting a solid 60 frames a second. I do have a very good system and it looks gorgeous. However, if I go down here and oddly enough, I stare at these bodies like that, you can see that the frame rate has dropped to 44. And again here on this nighttime vista, you can see 60 frames a second until I look down there and all of a sudden I've dropped to 42. Now, of course, I can reduce the shadow distance, but watch what happens when I do that. If you look close to the crosshair, look at the shadows around that pipe. As you can see, the shadow has disappeared and several other shadows have as well. The image just doesn't look as good or as realistic. However, if I can get past the dog and go down here to the area where I was getting 43 frames a second, you can see it is now rock steady at 60, no drop whatsoever. So it seems like I have to choose between keeping the 60 frames a second constant or having those lovely views where I see deep shadows in areas where it's appropriate. Well, at least that, that is the problem without the mod we're talking about. So let's have a look at the same situation with this mod installed. Now I've set a target frame rate for 59. I will explain that later on. Um, and you can see the shadows. The shadows are there around this pipe. Let's go down and look at the bad performance spot. You can see the frame rate drop straight away, but notice how it starts climbing again as the mod starts adjusting the distances of shadows until we get 59, 58, 60. Lovely and smooth. If I go back up top and look at the shadows, you can see they're still there. The image still looks great. Now it is a little delayed. It does take a couple of seconds, as you can see. This time it was a little faster, and that's because the, the, the draw distance for shadows was already a little lower as the mod was still calculating on the fly. But as you move around, generally you will get the best of both worlds. You will see shadows off in the distance when it is possible to do so and keep your steady frame rate, and occasionally when the frame rate dips, the mod will kick in and deal with it. If you are obsessed with keeping 60 frames a second minimum and never deviating, not even slightly, the mod probably won't be fast enough for you. As I said, it does take a couple of seconds when it encounters an area that is particularly stressful. But if you can put up with that, if you can put up with a couple of seconds, like there, I'm getting a slight dip now. If you can put up with that while it adjusts, this mod is really, really good. You get the, you, you do get the best of both worlds. You're getting the increased shadow distance and you are getting much better performance in certain areas where it is a problem. Uh, for all I know, the mod will actually get faster and will react quicker and quicker because obviously if it could react within a 10th of a second instead of a couple of seconds, as you can see here, I'm getting a slight drop in frame rate, and I can detect it. I'm ridiculously sensitive to this, he says, not being ridiculous, ridiculously sensitive to mines. I am very, very sensitive 
to even slight frame rate drops. Now, you might not be, and if so, this mod is definitely a good option. Now, there are ways of setting it up so that the, the frame rate drops and changes are not that big a deal, and I will show you how to do that. Now, if you're a veteran of installing mods on previous games, installation of this mod will actually be very simple. However, if you're new to modding, you've just started modding with Fallout 4, this mod is a little different to the mods you may have installed already. If you go along to the Nexus page and scroll down a little, you will see a link marked Download Latest Binaries. I'm going to open that because I'm going to need that as well. There are some instructions, and I do highly recommend that you read them. But for now, I'm going to open the Files section, and I'm going to download manually. This is the config file. So that's the config file. Now I go along to the link I opened and go down to where it says download and I'm going to download the binaries themselves. And that's it for the downloads. I now have two zip files, one with the binaries and one with the config. You're also going to need to open up your Fallout 4 game folder, not the data folder. You want the game folder, the same place you will find Fallout4.exe. Don't worry if you can't see the exe, that's your operating system just hiding known extensions for you. And then to install the mod, I'm going to open up the binaries zip file, go into bin, and I'm going to copy. Well, actually, the Shadow Boost Innie I don't need. That's the standard configuration. You just need the ASI and the DLL. So I'm going to select both of these, copy, right into the game folder. I'm going to close that and open up the configuration file itself. Again, go into bin, and this time you want the shadow boost ini file. This is the one you've downloaded from Nexus, not the one that came with the binaries. I'm going to copy this right in there. Now, actually, the INI file that came with the binaries themselves would probably work. It seems to be the same, but maybe that will have changed by the time you watch this video. So just check the files, check what it says on the Nexus page. It should have the instructions there. But once you've done that, the mod is actually installed. You've pretty much finished the installation process. The last thing to do is set up the ini file, the config file. I'm going to edit this with Notepad++. You can use any text editor, including Notepad. Now, there are three settings, the first of which is target frame rate. The default is 40. However, I like to keep 60 frames a second. But if you use VSync or cap your frame rate, you should not set this to be the same number as that. So, for example, I VSync. My monitor caps at 60, therefore you might think, oh, I want a target rate of 60. You do not want to do that. In fact, I'm going to show you why you don't want to do that. I'm going to set it to 60 and I'm going to go in game. So here I am in game and as you can see, the shadows are there. If I push dog meat out of the way, go down, let the mod do its thing. It's going to adjust the frame rate up to 60. Thank you very much. And now I'm going to go back and look at the pipe. And as you can see, no shadow. It's not adjusting it. You see, the problem is I'm already at the target 60, so the mod doesn't think it has to do anything, I'm afraid. It just thinks, okay, this is fine. We're going to leave it here. So what I recommend doing is actually changing this to one frame below whatever you are capped at. So for me, 59. Now the next two values are the shadow draw distance minimum and the maximum. Now I can tell you that if you choose medium shadow distance, you get 3000. And if you choose ultra, you get 20,000. So leaving the minimum distance at 2000 means it could actually bring the shadows in so that it was below the medium setting. I actually think that's a reasonable setting. If, you, if you're getting uh, frame rate dips and it needs to bring the shadows in that close, then so be it. However, if you really have a kind of 
real problem. You'd rather have the frame rate drop a little than get shadows looking this close. You could change it to say 3000, so it's the same as medium, or 6000. 6000 is kind of a nice happy medium for my system, but I have a, an amazing system. Um, the maximum distance is a little more... Well, I would use this as a, 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 with caution. You might think, all right, I will bump this up to 20,000. Uh, in fact, no, you know what? I'm going to bump it up to 30,000, way beyond ultra. This will make my game look awesome. And it might. It might. But the bigger the gap between these two values, the more of a stutter effect you're going to see when you get in game you're going to find that the game spends quite a lot of time adjusting and you have to ask yourself, is it worth it? How much do you notice the shadows at the various distances? So for example, do you notice the difference between ultra 20,000 and high? I don't remember what high is. Uh, if you don't notice any difference, don't crank this up because you will make, you'll make it so the mod has to keep changing it more and more, and you will see bigger swings. It, it will take longer for it to adjust the frame rate. In actual fact, if you can keep this relatively uh, modest, if you can keep the gap relatively modest, you have a slightly smoother time once in game. So I'm back in game. And I've got a target frame rate of 59, minimum distance of 3,000, maximum of 9,000. You'll notice the deep shadow around the pipe. If I now run downstairs to the bad spot, you notice how it didn't drop quite as much as last time. The game was already prepared because I hadn't stretched the distance quite as far. There you go, 60 frames a second. Let's go back up. You're going to see that the shadow comes back slowly. You see it? It's getting deeper and deeper and deeper as the mod is adjusting it. The swing is not as massive. It feels smoother. So as I'm moving around, even when I hit these horrible danger spots, the game is set up a little more conservatively and therefore I don't find the stutters and then when I move back out into the, the world where it's not as bad, it pushes the shadow distance out a little less aggressively, and so I don't notice the sudden shifts. Now, at this spot, which is a particularly bad spot for me, if I actually move over here, even with the mod, I'm getting maximum of 54 frames a second, which means I've set my minimum shadow distance a little too high. So I'm going to put that back to 2000, as was the default, and I am going to leave the shadow draw distance at 9000. And back here, if I go and look down here where I had the performance drop, let the mod do its thing. 55, 56, are we going to get anything higher than that? Possibly not. So I could even go lower than 2000 to try and improve things. I probably won't. I think at this point I'm just going to assume the game is never going to be uh, worse than this. This is actually the worst spot I have found in the game. And that's what I actually recommend you do. Find the worst spot in the game. Find out what shadow distance minimum you need to make it acceptable for you and set that to be your minimum. Then for the maximum, choose a value where you think the world looks good, but at the same time, you know, you don't necessarily think the, the performance is bad in most areas. So if you normally run your game on high, which actually turns out to be 14,000 distance, and generally your performance is good and you're happy with it, set it to 14,000. If you find that it quite often gives you problems and you generally set it down to medium, which is 3,000, perhaps bump it up to 6,000, maybe even 9,000 and see how it looks. For me, 9,000 is fine. I think 9,000 makes the game look really nice. I generally don't spend that much time looking off in the very far distance. So, overall, 
the, the rewards I get for pushing beyond 9,000 are minimum. So I'm going to leave mine at a minimum of 2,000 and a maximum of 9,000. And that's the real trick to this mod, finding that sweet spot, finding the range that works for you. Anyway, guys, that is it for this video. I hope you found it useful. I hope I managed to explain the mod well enough for you to decide if you want to use it and how you should use it. I will, of course, be bringing you more of these as I find mods that require that little extra attention. You are, of course, more than welcome to join me for that video or any of my other videos as well. But for whichever video you decide to join me on, I look forward to seeing you there. And until then, remember, as always, have fun. If you're curious as to whether I've covered a mod in one of my videos, feel free to go along to my website, gophersvids.com, and check the search functionality out. Just type the name of the mod you're interested in, open up the settings, and filter by mods only. Click for search, and you will see whether or not I've covered that mod. Click on the mod, and it will also show you any of the videos this mod appears in.